Good morning. How is everyone? Good. Morning. Good. Okay, so so your opener for today is to take out your six-word memoirs. And remember, I was hoping that you got two really good ones, and then if you could get a third, that was great. So what I'm asking is that you can share your six-word memoirs with the people around you. And then at the end of that, I'm going to ask for a few volunteers to actually share out for the class some of the best ones you think you heard, okay? You guys done? Ready? Okay. All right, here we go. Who wants to share? Ah, Nico. Okay. I did the brain and spinal cord connect. The brain and spinal cord connect. The brain and spinal cord connect. Got it. Good. Gather Marissa. and response information about environment. Perfect. Gather and response to information about environment. So the nervous system, um, does it gather and respond to information in the internal environment of the body or the external or both? Hello. Good. All right. Today we're going to actually continue on with that. And at the but that last half of today, we're going to do a lab that... Um, kind of allows you guys to see how that responding, gathering and responding information occurs. So, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Get out your systems of the body book. So, Josh, what's our first goal for today? Um, name and describe the structures, functions of the circulatory system. Very nice. So, name and describe the structures and functions of the circulatory and respiratory system. What's our second goal for the day, Wartha? Nice. So the investigating, that's where the lab comes in today. Because we're learning all this stuff that should happen in our bodies, but today we actually get to see, is it really what happens or not? So um, remember, with our notes, we're going to go with structure and then function, and then after that we're going to talk about relationship summary. Okay? So, ready? Structure on circulatory system. Everyone's on their circulatory system page. Check your partner. Make sure they're there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There we go. So the structure is starting with the heart. So the first thing I want you to do is, um, when you think about a heart, what kind of shape comes to mind? And actually locate that shape or locate the heart in your picture. Let's go ahead and locate it in that picture. Is the heart actually heart shaped? No. Very nice. OK. <laughs> but everybody located it in their picture, right? Good. As we go through um, the, this unit, I'm going to show you a little video, and we're going to go back to the heart. So leave some space underneath the heart for you to be able to take a few notes as we go back. Okay? Blood vessels. What do you think? Blood vessels. What do they? What do they look like? Uh, veins. Yeah, veins and arteries are both blood blood vessels. Very nice. Okay, so let's start with this. First of all, we have two types of blood vessels. We have veins, and we have arteries. The next one is function, right? So the function, what does the circulatory system actually do? What is its main job? And its main job is to be a transporter of oxygen, nutrients, and waste. So the blood actually acts as a little highway, taking in all the oxygen and nutrients and waste all throughout the body. If it's oxygen, it takes it to a certain area. Where do you think it's going to take the oxygen to? The lungs. Comes from the lungs. Do we need oxygen in our body? Yes. Why? So we can breathe. <laughs> for your muscles. Ah, Rachel, for your muscles. Why do you say for your muscles? Um, because your muscles need oxygen just like the rest of your body so they can work. Good, because what's the goal of life? To make what so we can function? ATP, good. And remember, when we looked at the, the, um, the oh, yeah. equation for ATP, you have to take in sugar. So C6H12O6 plus some oxygen, and with that, you can finally make water and carbon dioxide, and you got it, ATP. Very nice. So without the oxygen, no ATP. No ATP, we're going to survive? Nope. No. You got it. The blood helps you regulate body temperature. When you pump more blood to your certain areas of your body, or your entire body is pumping more blood, the temperature is going to increase. When there's less blood being pumped, so when you're very relaxed or, um, you know, in a state that you're not using a lot of energy, then your body temperature is going to be decreased. Also, we know that less blood is pumped to that area. Today, we're going to investigate. Our second goal is to investigate whether or not that's really true. 
video going, I would love for you to please turn to your partner and take, make a hypothesis as to which way heart, the heart pumps blood, or basically blood circulates throughout the heart, because that's what the video is going to be about. So look at your heart picture there and take a, make a hypothesis as how heart pumps the blood. Meaning which way? Does blood go in and come out? Okay, go. <laughs> Okay, right now in your notes, write down one thing you learn by watching that. Just one. One thing. If you want to write more, you can, but at least one. Okay, go ahead and take your one thing that you learned, turn to the person next to you and share out what it is. All right, ready? Share out. Who wants to share? One thing. What did you learn? Uh, that the heart beats 100,000 times per day. Perfect. 100,000 times per day. That's a lot. What else? So here's what I would love for you to do really quick is um, draw a heart. And it doesn't have to be the size of your fist, obviously. But draw a heart. And from, based on the video, draw some arrows as to blood flow. So how is the blood going in? Where does it go? And then back. And it's okay if you're not right yet. We still we're gonna work on this a little bit more, but I want you to kind of that kind of hurt. That kind of hard is fine. Good. It's all right, it's good. Remember, I'm asking you to just hypothesize and try to do the best you can. We're going to get back to this in more detail. Does everybody have a good rough sketch? Rough sketch? Yeah. Okay, let's look at blood, and then we'll, we'll go back to that, okay? My active board is being so... Okay. Place to end to end. The blood vessels in your body would stretch over 100,000 kilometers, meaning around our body. All right, write one or more things down that you gained from the video. One or more things. One or more facts, ideas, concepts. Okay, share out with your neighbor. Whatever you wrote down. What'd you get, Gonzalo? Nice. Oh, good, you got different ones. All right, let's sum it up. So, let's sum up our circulatory system um, so we can move on to respiratory. And so, what I want you to do now is under your summary, so under those notes, my circulatory system is important because, and how many complete sentences do you need? Three. Yep, at least three. So, at least three complete sentences. Incorporate all that stuff you got from the video and your notes. Summarize. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, that's perfect, actually. All right, as you're finishing up your last sentence, I want you to go find someone different in the class. So you're going to get up, go find someone, read your summary, and then make your way back to your seats. Let's do this in 30 seconds. Go. The last 
thing on the circulatory system I want you to be able to do, and you just, just think about this. What system previously studied, so that we've studied in our books, is connected to the circulatory system? Previously studied, not with today. Nervous? Okay, wait, one at a time, nervous. Who else thinks nervous? Okay, so why do you think the nervous system, Donya? It's your brain. Let's turn the page to respiratory, and that's going to be our last system for today, respiratory system. Respiratory system has some really important structures. Number one is the nose. All the oxygen you breathe in enters into the nose. We can actually add the mouth to this area because we do breathe in oxygen into our mouth, but most oxygen is through the nose in a normal human being. The nose is really fun because the nose is like a filtering system. The nose, you know how ever, people have nose hairs? So those nose hairs have a really important job. What's their important job, Haley? Collect, um, dust and stuff. Good. To, to collect dust and particles like pollutants that you don't want to get into your lungs, right? <laughs> and from the trachea, it goes to the lungs. When we look at the lungs, you can actually see how the trachea branches off into these things called bronchi or bronchus. Um, and then from there, it gets to these little, tiny, tiny little branches, the bronchiolus. Do the tube, does the tubing for air get thinner as it goes into the lungs? Yeah. Yes. Why is that important? So they fit. What? So they fit. Okay, so they fit inside the lungs. <coughs> it has to do with oxygen. So oxygen gets into your lungs, right? From the lungs, where does the oxygen go to be transported throughout the body? Yeah, it goes into your blood. And so if it's thinner, that means more oxygen can actually get into your blood and then be transported throughout the body. All right, so we go to structures? Okay, so the first function is going to be to obtain oxygen needed for cell respiration. Mac, what's cell respiration? What do you think, Regina? Good. Cell respiration is when tel cells take in oxygen and also glucose and they release carbon dioxide, but more importantly, they also make what? ATP. ATP. Good. And so all the oxygen needed for making ATP in the body is because of our great respiratory system. Without it, we wouldn't be able to take in enough oxygen, and hence this whole entire process stops. Caleb, without making ATP, are we going to be functioning, period? No. And so you can see how the connection, hopefully. Just put your hand in the air if you get the connection there. <laughs> All right, the next one is called the re remove carbon dioxide, the next function. So as we breathe in, we breathe in what? Carbon dioxide. Oxygen. 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 Last I checked, you weren't a plant. And when we breathe out, we breathe out what? Carbon Good. So all a part of the respiratory system. I want to show you a really quick two-minute video. It's on the respiratory system, and then we're going to go into our investigating today. Okay. Okay, ready? Take an, uh, one molecule of oxygen and in your picture trace its path to the lungs and then to the blood. What? Take one molecule of oxygen, so draw one molecule, so basically one O2 and trace its path to the lungs. Which Either one you want. How's that? And somehow connect your circulatory system to that. Look at yours, turn to your partner, see if they're the same or similar. <laughs> All right, put your thumb up if you and your partners look like they're very similar. To the side, if not so much, and down, if definitely not at all. <laughs> all right. 
Why are walls of capillaries, which are the little hair-like structures we were talking about, and alveoli, which were related to broccoli. broccoli or analogous to broccoli in our video, why are they only one cell thick? Write it down. Right? What do you think? Okay. Evelyn, why do you think the capillaries and alveoli are just one cell thick? Good, very nice. Last but not least, I want you to make the connection. So you, uh, not written form, just vocal form. Turn to somebody around you, make a connection with your respiratory and any of the previous systems we studied. Go. And the why, the why. Behind you. Okay, so let's go back really quick. So what Evelyn responded to, so I've had some people actually ask, what was, what was the question, why are the capillary and alveoli walls only one cell thick? Well, oxygen is coming into the body via the lungs, right? Once it gets to the alveoli, the alveoli, so let's, here's my tree diagram. I know you guys love my drawings. So here we go. So the alveoli are like little broccoli, right? But really, they're tiny little sacks of, filled with air. Or they're filled with air when there's actually oxygen inside of them, right? So if the walls of the alveoli are very thin, meaning only one cell thick, can oxygen get out of the alveoli into the blood faster? Yes. Yes. Good. And the capillaries are just one cell thick. And we know that capillaries actually um, carry what? And? Blood. blood. Blood is a transporter, right? So if both of those walls are one cell thick, the oxygen is going to get into these little capillaries. And then now it can go throughout the entire body. <laughs> clicky, clicky. Pretty much. Sorry. It's the bottom. All right, finish up your last sentence there. And go ahead and get out your lab, exercise and homeostasis. All right, give me a thumbs up if you feel like you can name some of the structures of the circulatory system. Circulatory system. And to the side if not really, and down if absolutely not. All right, give me a thumbs up to the side or down if you can name some of the structures of the respiratory system. Good, Josh, what? Lungs. lungs, good, what else? Good, nose. Oh, you said lungs, I'm sorry, I thought you said us. I scarred you for life. Sorry, Michael. Um, give me another one. Larynx, good, what else? Trachea, good, what else? Pharynx. Sinuses. What else? Nose. Nose, good job. Okay, so the second goal for today was uh, what, Chris? Good. So we're going to investigate and describe the interrelationship, the interconnectedness between, most importantly, the respiratory and circulatory today. But what you guys are going to notice in this lab is there's a lot more, lot, a lot of other systems coming into play. So this lab is all about maintaining homeostasis. What does homeostasis mean? Haley. Keep your body level. Good. To keep your body level or in balance. Very nice. So today, we're going to have a few people actually do some exercise, and there, we're going to have a few people actually recording some data, and a few people who are going to be coaching them. So there's no loafers. What is a loafer? <laughs> That's right, no loafing. So our problem, the whole point of doing this today, is what, Kyle Burfield? What is the question we are trying to answer? Good, and we're particularly looking at? Respiration, so breathing rate, Plus relationship. heart rate, perspiration. and perspiration level. Very nice. And so right at the end of this lab, you should be able to answer this question. So the first thing we have to do is actually know where to take a pulse. So put up your left hand, okay, the thumb side of your left hand right towards in your wrist area is going to be like a little indentation. You're going to take your first two digits on the opposite hand, and you're going to feel there for a pulse. What you're going to do is take a baseline, how they are at a resting state, 
and then start them with the exercising. Okay, so first they're inactive, you're going to take their respiratory, so their pulse rate, you're going to watch them breathe in and out, and then they're going to exercise and you're going to do the same thing, okay? So number two says you're going to measure the heart rate by taking his or her pulse. To take the pulse, you're going to place your second and third fingers right in the area I showed you, and you're going to very carefully count while somebody else is timing, because we're in groups of four today. So one person can be the timer while the other one is actually counting, and then after you do that, you're going to look at their respiration level. So all you're going to do is stare at the person's chest and watch their chest go in, out, in, out. Yeah. Same with the person's breathing rate. You do it for 15 seconds, you calculate it or times it by four to get the calculated data. And, of course, you're going to continue this, repeat the steps three more times. You're going to watch, hopefully, their respiration and cardio, so their circulatory and cardiovascular respiratory system cause all of that to increase. That's the goal. Is it going to happen? I don't know. We have to investigate it. We have to see if what I just told you is going to be accurate. Any questions? Okay, so we are going to adjust to the lab portion. Next time we're going to come back and talk about the data and finish graphing the data and doing all that. Ready? Disperse. After one trial. Ah, how many of you actually would have thought that would have been the case? Okay.